we're gonna go from this video look to a cinematic anamorphic look. And I'm gonna show you how I did it in DaVinci Resolve 19 Studio. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create an anamorphic timeline. So I'm gonna come over to my media pool window here, right click, go to timelines, and then hit create new timeline. And then I'm gonna uncheck use project settings, and we'll go over to format. And then from here, we'll tab down. Okay, so then from here, we'll scroll down and we'll go to DCI scope 2.39 and hit create. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my stock footage clip here and we'll put it onto our timeline. And then I'm going to adjust the height and position of this. And then we'll do negative 83. And then we also wanna add a little bit of distortion to the lens. We wanna do it just a hair. So I'm actually just gonna change it to zero, negative 0 0.084. All right, so next I'm going to come over and tab into the color menu. Okay, so now we're gonna come over and right click on our node and hit add node and hit add serial. And then we're gonna come on down to where our magic mask is. Okay, so we're gonna come over and click on our color picker tool here, which is this plus drop here. And for quality, we're gonna hit better. And then we're just gonna do a rough outline around our subject here. And this doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. Okay, now we want to see what we're masking right now or what it's trying to mask. So I'll go ahead and hit this overlay icon right here. And so right now you can see it's masking out our subject. But we actually want to do the opposite. We want to just work and adjust the background for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the mask. And then now we're going to track the mask. So to do that, I'm gonna come down to these arrows going backwards and forwards, and I'll hit that to track the mask. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we want to blur the edges of this mask. So this is gonna help a lot with ghosting. And depending on your clip, you might add more or less of this, depending on how it looks to you. But to me, 72.6 is the sweet spot for this clip. After we've adjusted the blur radius, we'll come up to our second node here, and we'll right click, go to add node, add serial. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come down and adjust just different levels here so I can adjust the amount of blur here. Now, I don't like to go too aggressive here because if I go too aggressive, you just see a ton of ghosting and it just looks really, really blatantly unnatural, even at like three, that's pushing it, I would say. So we're gonna go down to about 2.93. Three. That seems to be a nice sweet spot there. So we'll keep it at that. And then uh, for anamorphism, I like it at one. If I move it down, you'll see it kind of takes away the anamorphic look. But right at one looks pretty good. Now you can, you can adjust more of it if you want to, but I'll just keep it at one for now. And then if we want to see the before and after, we can come and toggle this on and off. So that's off and that's on. So that's off and on. So again, it's just a very subtle blur. If we go too aggressive with it, it's gonna look extremely fake, which is why we just wanna go very subtle with it, but that still makes a very big difference and a very big effect, even though it's just some small adjustments we're making here. Okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is we want to adjust the uh, some of the, the grain, the halation, as well as the um, just the overall color grade. And one of the easiest ways that we can do this to kind of give it more of like a cinematic anamorphic look rather than a video look is what we'll do is we'll right click again on this node, go to add node, add serial, and then we'll go up here to our library and we'll type in film. And we'll just do the film look creator. And right off the bat, when I apply that, that looks pretty good. If I toggle this on and off, Okay, so right away, that's a very big difference in quality, in my opinion. When you go from this video look to this cinematic look, that's a pretty big difference in quality right off the bat. And so what this is doing is it's doing a few different things. So one is that it's, it's, um, it's adjusting the color grade, taking away some of those uh, 
those magenta colors and adding in a little bit more green. Again, this is just a, a default preference that's set here. We can go in and we'll go in and adjust these a little bit more fine tune here. So actually right off the bat, I really like the way this looks. This looks really, really good. Um, so what basically what this is doing is a few things here. So it's trying to emulate film and the way it's doing that is we've got, so we've got just our basic um, film look settings here and then also um, some color settings down here. And then we have our split tone. So we can enable that if we want to. Right now it's disabled. Uh, vignette, so there is a little bit of a vignette, some halation. So that's just an attribute of film. And then a little bit of bloom going on and some grain and a little bit of flicker as well. And so it's just adding some very subtle effects here just to give it more of an organic look here. And so the only thing I'm really going to adjust here is I'm going to turn my contrast down a little bit because I don't want it to be too crunchy. And then, and then for the skin bias, I'm going to turn this up close to the max threshold, just right before it. And then I'm going to keep everything else the same. Again, you can come in here and do some fine tuning, but I'll just keep that pretty much the same. Subtractive saturation, let's turn that up a little bit. Just so that way it retains some of the skin tone colors. And we don't want to go too aggressive with that because then that looks kind of funny to me. So we'll keep it about right there at 1.615. 1 okay, and then we'll scroll down to the bottom and then we'll go to Global Blend. And if we put this all the way at zero, you'll notice how we're back to that video-esque quality there. And as we turn it up, we can see that it's adding more film quality as we go. So usually I don't like to go totally extreme with the film quality. Some people do. I'm gonna keep it at about 70%, which means that it's blending 70% of this effect into the original clip here. And again, if it's at zero, it's video. If we go up to about 70, then it's mixing in most of the effect, but not all of it. So we'll keep it around that point. And there you have it. That is how you turn a video clip into a cinematic anamorphic video.